everyone, this is Ishan and I love economics. Today I'm going to talk about two concepts in macroeconomics, labor force and employment and GDP. Let us start with labor force. Who is a part of labor force? All the employed people and unemployed people in the country together make the labor force. Yes, you're right, the unemployed people as well. So who's not a part of the labor force? If unemployed people are a part of labor force, who is not? Well, it is people who are over age, retired, people who are under age, so below the minimum legal age to work, so children, for example, people who have had accidents or are disabled, unable to work, despite the want to work, and finally, you have the category of people who simply don't want to work. So these are the ones who are not a part of the labor force, but the employed and unemployed are a part of labor force. Remember, to be categorized as unemployed, you should be actively be looking for a job. You should be seeking work on an active basis. Only then you are unemployed. So you got employed and unemployed under labor force, and then you have the ones who are not a part of labor force. Let us now focus on the three main categories of unemployment. The categories I would like to speak about are frictional unemployment, structural unemployment, and cyclical unemployment. Frictional unemployment is basically a temporary unemployment. When you're between two jobs, you may have quit your previous job and the new one may be starting in a month's time. In that month period, you are frictionally unemployed. It's temporary, you're between two jobs. Structural unemployment is where your skills do not match the skills required by the organization does not mean you're not skilled. You may be a very highly skilled person, but you don't have those particular skills that the organization you work for requires. In that situation, if you lose your job, we would say you're structurally unemployed. The last category is cyclical unemployment. Cyclical comes from the word cycle, the business cycle. So when you have troughs and peaks, in the business cycle when you have ups and downs in the economy and people lose their jobs. For example, when people lost their jobs during the global financial crisis, you would say they were cyclically unemployed. To keep it very simple, cyclical unemployment is the unemployment due to the gap between the demand and supply. So basically, if there are less jobs, then the number of people looking for jobs, you would simply say, those people are cyclically unemployed. Now we come to the concept of full employment. What comes to your mind when you hear full employment? For many people, they would say, no one's unemployed in the country. But in macroeconomics, that's not true. We say a country or an economy has full employment when there is an absence of cyclical unemployment. It simply means there could be people unemployed, they could be frictionally or structurally unemployed, but no one is cyclically unemployed. Simply means there is no shortage of jobs. The employment is purely, the unemployment is purely because people are between jobs or maybe their skills don't match, but not because of shortage. So the absence of cyclical unemployment does mean the economy has full employment. Now I'll move on to GDP. GDP means gross domestic product. There are two main types of GDPs, the real GDP and the nominal GDP. The real GDP takes into account inflation and it uses base year prices. So that way you can compare the GDP of your country in this year against one of the past years. To have a fair comparison, you need to take into account inflation. And that's where real GDP helps you out. So if it's real GDP, it is taking into account inflation and you're using base year prices. As far as nominal GDP is concerned, that's the other type of GDP. You simply use the current year prices. So nominal GDP gives you current year situation. Real GDP is used to compare different GDPs accounting for inflation. Now calculating GDP. To calculate GDP there are two main methods, the income approach and the expenditure approach. Income approach is basically 
uh, the national income, all the incomings in the economy. It does not have a fixed formula. But the expenditure approach does. Expenditure approach is about all the expenses in the country, all the outgoings. It is made up of C, I, G, and NX. You add all of them and you get your expenditure approach for GDP. It is C plus I plus G plus NX. C stands for consumption, I stands for investments, G stands for government spending, and NX is net exports, which is simply exports minus imports. So when we hear the GDP of some countries is very high, what does it mean? It means one of these factors is very high. Consumption could be very high. For example, in India and China, with the number of people, there is a very high consumption. There is a very high government spending as well. They have very huge exports. So that's why the GDPs of these countries are very high. If you look at the GDP for Norway, it's quite low. It's minuscule compared to that of India and China. And why is that? Because these countries don't have many people. And that's why they don't manufacture much. They don't have a lot of exports. And they have very low consumption. That's your GDP. Now, if you think about it, do you reckon GDP is sufficient to talk about the standard of living in a country? Not really. To, know, to get a better understanding of the standard of living and the quality of life in a country, we need a bit more than GDP. How about GDP per capita? It simply means GDP per person. GDP per capita basically accounts for the population. So it's easier to understand how much each person is contributing or receiving in a country. But that's not enough as well. How about we use HDI, which is Human Development Index. Human Development Index is a better method of understanding the well-being in a country because it takes into account GDP per capita plus two new factors. And those are the quality and access to education and the last factor, the third factor, is the life expectancy at birth. This way, HDI gives a better feeling and understanding of how the country is doing when it comes to the standard of living. Countries like Norway, Australia always are in the top three when it comes to HDI ranks, but not so when it comes to GDP. You can see the difference in the next example that I show you on a piece of paper. Let's move on. We have seen what GDP is, nominal and real GDPs are, we have seen the approaches, we have seen GDP per capita, and we have also seen HDI. But none of these give you the full picture about the standard of living in a country. For that, you need to have know a few more factors. Let's list a few factors. Take a moment, pause the video, and check, ask yourself, what factors should be considered when we talk about standard of living and quality of life in a country? These should not be a part of GDP per capita, and they should not be a part of HDI. Think about it. Well, we can say there are all the freedoms, political, economic freedoms, like freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of choosing whom you want to marry, for example. Yeah, freedom of, um, well, you, you can, the list can just go on. Freedom of having alcohol as well. That itself can also um, monitor, can determine the quality of life in a country. Apart from all the freedoms, what else can you think of? How about the natural calamities and the weather conditions in the countries? Imagine the quality of life in a country that constantly has droughts. Or imagine the quality of life in a country which has constant flooding or earthquakes or volcanic eruptions or storms and typhoons or tornadoes. Natural calamities play a very big role in the quality of life. Apart from those, how about sanitation? How about the availability of toilets in the country? How about access to clean drinking water, which is a basic necessity of life? How about crime and war? Imagine living in a country that is war-torn. Imagine the quality of life in that country. And lastly, how about political instability. Imagine having an unstable government. Oh, of course, and let's not forget pollution as well. Pollution, traffic conditions, those two would affect the quality and standard of living. So we have seen there are a lot of factors that are not considered in HDI or GDP per capita or simply GDP. 
which should be considered when it uh, when we are considering the quality of life and the standard of living in different countries. Let's quickly recap what we just saw before. So we have the labor force. It's made up of employed people and unemployed people. Unemployed people are categorized into three parts, frictionally unemployed, structurally unemployed, and cyclically unemployed. You add these two and you get natural rate of unemployment. You get rid of cyclical and whatever is left in the economy is full employment. So an economy without cyclical unemployment is an economy with full employment. People who are not a part of the labor force are the ones who are underage, retired, disabled, or don't want to work. As far as the GDP was concerned, we looked at real GDP that took into account inflation and used base year prices. We used nominal GDP that used current year prices. We saw the two approaches, the income approach, it shows everything incoming and we had the expenditure approach that spoke about all the outgoings, which included C plus I plus G plus NX. C for consumption, I for investments, G for government spending, NX for net exports, that is exports minus imports. We also looked at GDP per capita that took into account the population. We looked at HDI, that was the human. Development index, which took into account GDP per capita, access to education and life expectancy at birth. And then we also looked at factors that matter to people when it comes to standard of living, such as crime rate, war, all the social and political freedoms. We looked at pollution, natural disasters, the political stability of the countries, and so on. So here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope you all enjoyed the video and understood a bit more about GDP, labor force, unemployment, and how we shouldn't just look at the GDP figures and decide how a country is doing. There is a lot of factors. There are heaps of factors that need to be considered when it comes to the quality of living and the standard of living in a particular country. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to this uh, channel. If you like to have more videos, click on like and I'll see you in another video. That was Ishan. Thank you.